I was recently assigned a homework assignment of one hour of self-pleasure every single day. And I thought to myself, what the f How am I going to have time for this? Which, of course, caused me to realize that I need to reprioritize some things in my life. If I'm having trouble squeezing pleasure in, I imagine you too might be having trouble squeezing pleasure in. And if that's the case, you may be noticing that your desire for pleasure or your libido has been decreasing. You see, for me, self-pleasure is a lot like going to the gym. When I go to the gym regularly, it feels good, I feel great, I have a lot of momentum, and I wanna keep going. But when I take long, extended breaks in between gym sessions, it can be a lot harder for me to get back into it. So today in this video, I, Caitlin V, sex and relationship coach, I'm going to share with you how to boost your libido naturally, how to increase your desire for sex, and how to enhance your relationship with pleasure. And I'm going to give you my exact seven step formula for enhancing your libido naturally. And I came up with at least a dozen different new things for you to try at home in order to make this fun, exciting, and pleasurable. Let's just go with that. Let's get started. As a sex coach, many people come to me because they or their partner are experiencing decreased desire or low libido, and there are so many reasons that this can happen. Long-term relationships that we've allowed to get a little stale and stagnant, life experiences such as the stress of moving or a new job, starting a family and having children, psychological or emotional trauma, physical trauma or injury to the body, chronic health concerns, a pandemic, there are so many reasons that we experience a decrease in libido, but the good news is that engaging in self-pleasure is great for us. If you desire to have a healthy sex life, then that sex life can be a major boost to your romantic life, to your physical well-being, to who you are as a parent, a mom, a dad, a brother, a sister, a community member, and a colleague. Having a vibrant and healthy sex life is great for your body, mind, and soul, and it's worth the effort that it takes to get there. The idea that it's gonna just happen naturally is outdated, and quite frankly, was never true. Today, we know better. We know that having a vibrant sexual life requires effort and energy, and actually that it pays off and it can be a lot of fun along the way. And that's what I'm going to share with you today. First, let me issue just one caveat. There are plenty of sex scientists, scholars, and authors who debate the use of terms like libido or sex drive, and I'm completely on board with that. For the purposes of this video, we're gonna consider this as a route. I'm dripping in sweat, okay. Tons of people live in humidity and they make it work, Caitlin, we can make it work. Suffice it to say, what we think about as libido and sex drive is a flawed, flawed concept. But for the purposes of this video, I'm gonna talk about how to increase our arousal and our desire for sex. And because these terms are fairly common, I am going to use them and with abandon. And maybe we'll pick up the conversation around the legitimacy of the idea of a sex drive later down the road. All right, with that out of the way, let's get to my seven step system for reclaiming sex and pleasure and arousal for all. Number one, it starts with you. Your relationship with your arousal is your own and you'll bring your partner in later down the road. But first step, it starts with you and your relationship to yourself. Number two, consider why this is important to you. Not just to your partner or not just to your relationship, but why does it matter to you to have a healthy and active relationship with arousal and pleasure? Number three, prioritize and schedule a self-pleasure practice. Now, self-pleasure doesn't necessarily have to mean genital touch or masturbation, although it certainly does include those. But prioritize and set aside time for you to engage your body in arousal and in pleasure. Number four, set goals and track your progress. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, Caitlin, that is rather unsexy. I do not want to set goals and objectives for my pleasure. I have to do that for work and I don't wanna bring that into the bedroom. I get it. Again, the idea that sex should just happen naturally is a flawed one. Anything that you've ever wanted in your life, you had to set a goal and track your progress, whether that was running a half marathon or developing a perfect spaghetti recipe. You had to have a goal in mind and you had to practice to get there and tracking your progress, whether that's beating your previous mile time or adding additional salt this time, 
and writing it in the recipe book, it's all important and it all helps us to get to where we are trying to go. Number five, celebrate small victories. You may have set aside five minutes a day to do some self-pleasure activity. Maybe as simple as just touching the inside of your arm very lightly and gently and being very mindful with it for five minutes. Trust me, five minutes will seem like an eternity when you first start. Celebrate yourself and celebrate your progress. You can celebrate in a multitude of different ways by rewarding yourself with something that feels earnestly good. And then after maybe meeting your goals three out of five days or five out of seven days, you set a larger reward. And then for four out of five weeks or three months that you've been engaging in self-pleasure, you set an even larger reward. Give yourself something to look forward to and celebrate your wins often. That can look as simple as dancing to your favorite song because it just feels so good to do that and you did your self-pleasure and maybe even dancing is part of your self-pleasure. You can get creative with it. The most important thing is just celebrating the steps and the wins along the way. Number six, keep going despite setbacks. Just as in my gym analogy earlier, some days you go to the gym and it feels great. Some days you go to the gym and it feels awful. You feel like you can't do it, you don't wanna do it anymore, you experience some sort of setback. You're plateauing, you're not getting the gains that you were etc. Keep going. There is inherent goodness in practicing and making this a part of your practice even when you don't feel like doing it. Acknowledging it when you don't feel like doing it, but doing it anyway is a very important skill and it is what makes the difference between those people who reach their goals and those people who do not. And finally, step seven is try new things. Okay, I came up with a whole bunch of new things that you can try and introduce into your self-pleasure practice. These are in no way an exhaustive list. This is just some inspiration to get you going. Sound good? First of all, let's talk self-pleasure literally in arousing, turning on, and touching the body. You can change up a variety of different things. The position that you put your body in. So you lay on your back, try laying on your stomach. The time of day, if you usually self-pleasure in the evening, try self-pleasuring in the morning. The amount of clothing that you're wearing. If you're usually naked, try with clothes on, maybe some lingerie. Change the location in your house. If you're usually on your bed, maybe try a bathroom. If you live alone, you can try the kitchen floor. Move around, keep it fresh and interesting. Try different toys. So if you do usually use a sex toy, don't use a sex toy, use your hands. If you do usually use your hands, try investing in a new toy. Duration, so how long you self-pleasure for. Switch it up between five and 50 minutes and keep switching it up and experiment with different durations. And then finally, body parts. If you usually go straight to your genitals, maybe try a more circuitous route that uses your lips or your nipples on the way there. Maybe even just self-pleasure your nipples. See if you can give yourself a nipple orgasm. If you are a person who is assigned female at birth, then a nipple orgasm may be more achievable around the time of ovulation, but you can experiment with that and see what comes up. There's no right or wrong way to self-pleasure. Pleasure is the goal, not orgasm. As long as you keep going in that direction, you should be able to experience a lot a lot, a lot of pleasure along the way. If you are familiar at all with the erotic blueprints, you can use all of the erotic blueprints to try new things. If you're not familiar, I will put a link to the quiz to the erotic blueprints below. Basically, experiment with the energetic blueprint. Look into Tantra and very light, airy touch, or maybe even non-physical sex and energy orgasms. Try the sensual blueprint. Arouse yourself with your sight, your sound, your scent, play music, diffuse essential oils, invest in some really luxurious sheets, maybe even hop in the bathtub. Try experimenting in the sexual blueprint. Buy yourself a bunch of different toys, experiment with them. Buy a new vibrator or a masturbation sleeve if you were assigned male at birth. You can experience a whole bunch of different sensations that will pleasure and delight and excite you in the sexual blueprint. And finally, try the kinky blueprint, either by doing some pain for pleasure, maybe experiment with e-stimulation, personal favorite. You can get some arousing erotica that's taboo and psychologically kinky. The erotic blueprints alone could provide an endless wealth of ideas for how to engage in a new and different, try new things in your self-pleasure practice. And then finally, keep yourself on simmer. So if you haven't been doing this before, constantly on a regular basis, arouse yourself. Maybe when you're standing in the elevator, sink 
some sexy thoughts or remind yourself of your self-pleasure practice from the day before if it was a particular turn on for you. Give yourself some time to fantasize and consume some erotic material. Don't expect that you will always be starting from nothing, from no arousal, from no stimulation. If you are constantly reminding yourself that you are a sexual being that enjoys arousal and pleasure, then you'll be constantly keeping yourself on a low simmer. And then, as you can imagine, it's much easier to turn yourself up to a boil when you desire it. If you are at room temperature all the time and then you expect to get to boiling when your partner looks over at you with that look in his eyes, it's gonna be a a lot more challenging to get there. So keep yourself on simmer. All right, I want you to take a moment and write into the comments what you are going to try following this video or what your favorite tip was. And while you're down there, make sure to give this video a like and make sure that you're subscribed. Now, I wanna make a couple caveats for those of you who are still with me. In order for anything that I have just said to work, you have to legitimately want sex. You have to want to want sex. If you don't want to want sex, then no amount of self-pleasure practice is necessarily going to change anything for you. And that's perfectly fine. The other important caveat here is that if you have a major emotional or psychological or physical trauma that needs to be processed and attended to, then you need to process and attend to that first. You can't skip that and just go straight for, let me boost my libido. There's a real legitimate need for you to heal the wounds Oh, a bird just chirped. You need to heal the wounds that are there and it's totally possible to do so and reclaim your pleasure and maybe even pleasure can be a part of your healing, but make sure that you're working with a professional, a licensed therapist, a counselor, maybe even a coach depending on the scale of the trauma to resolve that and heal that so that your pleasure can actually find a place of healing and you can engage with it from a place of wholeness. All right, here's the good news. If you don't want to want sex, you are not alone. You may identify along the asexual spectrum. Asexuality is just not experiencing sexual desire or sexual arousal and not interested in having sex with others. It's a huge and vibrant community and your identity is completely legitimate. Now, if you are asexual or you find yourself in a relationship with someone who is asexual, you may want to renegotiate your expectations and your sexual contract in your relationship so that both of you can get your needs met, can have your boundaries be respected, and can continue to live in a happy relationship whether or not it involves sex with each other. Natural fluctuations of libido are absolutely normal. You may experience changes in your sex drive over life related to hormones, health, stress, pandemics, a whole host of potential issues may influence your libido and that's perfectly okay. If you want to reclaim it, make sure that you prioritize and set aside time for your pleasure. Be open to defining what self-pleasure is in very, very broad terms. Prioritize it, track it, and make sure that you are celebrating the heck out of yourself for meeting your goals. Yeah, I said heck. I don't think I've ever used a nice word on this channel. I usually just ask editor Jason to bleep me out. Heck, heck, it feels good. I feel so wholesome right now. Try new things, check out the erotic blueprints, and make sure that you apply for coaching if you want some support with this. Remember that you being tapped into your arousal and to your pleasure is good for yourself, for your life force energy, for your body, mind, spirit, for your relationships, and for all of the people around you. Your pleasure truly is worth prioritizing. And I wish you the most satisfying and pleasurable exploration. I hope that you found this video to be useful. I'll see you here next week.